Hello, and welcome to Esther's Gardening Adventures. I'm Esther, and it is officially fall, y'all. <laughs> I have so many things I need to do in the garden, and I tell you what, the fall snuck up on me, and it's my favorite season of the year outside of the garden because I love the chilly air, I love Halloween and fall decorations and colors, like that burnt orange is one of my favorite colors all year round. So, you know, I'm just really, really, and I finally get to haul out my pumpkin shirts. Granted, I've been wearing it all year, but now I can be in season. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm really excited it's fall, but there are a number of things I need to do to get my garden ready for the fall. One of them I have already done, and I'll show you in a second, which was to clean up the bed underneath this maple tree. Another thing I want to do is I want to plant some fall bulbs. And I've never done fall bulbs before. Um, for you, know, you plant the bulbs in the fall in Maryland Zone 7A, which is where I'm at. You plant them in the fall for them to bloom in the summer or the spring. And I got two boxes of Hyacinth, the blue mix from one of the big box stores. Um, I, this is one of my favorite smelling flowers. As, my, as a child, when we'd go down to downtown DC in the spring and go to the gardens that are around the Jefferson Memorial, there would always be a garden that was full of tulips and hyacinths. And I remember just loving the smell of them as a child. So I'm gonna plant some of them. I'm probably gonna plant them in this bed here because uh, I read online the point that they they bloom basically before the trees get their full foliage. And so you don't have to worry as much about shade from the tree for these guys. So we're gonna try that. Um, another thing I need to do is over there, you can see my um, ferns and hostas. Um, only the hosta in the brown one is potted up. The other one in that pot there, that is actually just sitting in the pot in a container. And we also have a hosta on the other side that is literally in the holding container I got it at in a seedling exchange. So they just need a lot. They need to be potted up for the winter or else they probably won't do very well um, in those cold temperatures. They've done okay with me watering them regularly, but I need to just take care of them. And then another thing I've been doing, so I've been thinking about I've been thinking about, you know, my memory isn't that amazing. Um, and that's why I keep a journal, a garden journal and all that kind of stuff. But I've been thinking about how to mark the places in my garden where plants will die back. And I need to remember that they're perennial or native or something and not to kind of plant in those places with other seeds or other bulbs or other things. So I was thinking through what to do and I just happened to be watching uh, a Roots and Refuge episode um, on YouTube when they were marking the boundaries of where they want their garden to go with flags, the kind that you use when you're doing landscaping or if you're doing surveying work, right? It's these flags, I haven't opened it up yet. But you can get, they're only like seven bucks or something like that. So these are the flags and basically I'm gonna put, there's a hundred in a pack, which is no way I'll use all of them, but I'm gonna put one in the ground where each perennial is that I need to leave. That's for my potted plants, that's for in the in-ground gardens and other things. For example, I have a foxglove plant, which I'll show you in a second, that um, they tend to, um, if you don't buy them at a big box store pre-blooming, they tend to take two years to flower. And so I have some over in one of my containers that I wanna remember to not plant anything there because they'll probably come back again next year and we'll have some beautiful flowers. So um, let me take you around and uh, I'll show you first of all what I did over here with this bed. Now let me also quickly add that this list of things to do, I'm not gonna get it all done today, but I'm hoping that my list will help generate some ideas for you, get you thinking about what you wanna do in the garden, and I'd love to hear your feedback on what you have on your list and um, any things you think I should add to the list. I did think of two or three more things that I want to do this fall. One is I need to add compost and um, other things to the raised beds, the container beds that I have, because always the soil goes down a little bit. So you need to add some there, I'll do that. And then also come November, I'll be planting up some garlic, um, hardneck garlic in my area is the best kind to grow. And I should add that um, 
I was very excited when yesterday I got the email that the garlic I ordered, um, in addition to the ones I grew last year that I've saved some bulbs from, um, I ordered this garlic in like May and it's my first time pre-ordering something. So I was very nervous and it's coming. So I'm excited about that. And I'm looking forward to doing a video when I plant that garlic. All right, now let's get out and see. So first of all, let me show you. Here's the fern that I was talking about that needs to be potted up. This is a fern I got when I was at the monastery in South Carolina. Potted up. You can even see the, the roots are trying to come out and find some nutrients. So yesterday I had a little bit of uh, free time around lunch and I came out and I weeded this bed and I put pine mulch down in between the spaces. And so we're just left with the alyssum, these white flowers around the edge here, and then the chamomile that I'm hoping will eventually take, become a carpet. And you know, there is some neat signs here of it sort of clustering together and making that carpet-like structure I really wanna see under the tree. So that is starting to happen. I tried to put mulch in between spots where it is growing. So it is kind of starting to create like that carpet look. And maybe next year we'll have more success with a lot more of it. I didn't realize until recently that alyssum is actually a brassica, and so it is frost hardy, which makes sense, because I did plant it back when we were still having frosts. So we might still have some color when other plants have died back from the fall frost. I also had a lot of weeds growing up over here, so I put some mulch down, uh, weeded and put some mulch down around the edge of the bed over here. And so I think it just looks, even though it doesn't look quite perfect, I think it looks a lot better. And one of the observations I have, you know, as being a new gardener, there's a lot of stuff to learn. And one of the observations I have is I think in the future, I'm not gonna plant flowers so close to the edge of the bed because there is something nice about having a nice trim of mulch that sort of separates the edge of the bed and marks it and makes it clear that it isn't weeds there. Um, and so in the future, I will probably plant the plants a little bit further back um, when I have that option. Here's the foxglove that I was talking about that I had last year. Um, tell me people, are these spots on it something to be worried about? It was next to the um, zinnias and I don't know if it got some kind of rust disease or something because in that case I should just destroy it. Um, but if it's safe, then um, I will mark it with the little flag. So here we have it. And I don't want to damage the plant, so I'm just going to put it right about there as a reminder to myself that that is something that's going to grow back next year and not to plant anything within that general vicinity in that pot. I don't know whether yarrow actually lasts through the winter, but I'm guessing it doesn't. I know it's perennial though, so I'm actually gonna mark this spot for the yarrow. And I know I have a clump over here too, so I'm gonna mark <coughs> that spot for the yarrow. So now we have two flags up for yarrow, and I'm gonna make a chart or a list in my gardening journal and I'm gonna say, okay, in this bed I have two flags, they're for yarrow and blah, 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 right? Um, so that I can remember what's where. And look guys, we have some calendula blooming from the plant that I planted in the spring. So I was going to succession plant more calendula and um, I didn't and I was thinking, oh, it'd be nice to have some calendula flowers in the fall. But look, this plant has decided to give it a resurgence and I think I will fertilize it. Go away, butterfly. That kind of butterfly is the kind that spreads the cabbage uh, worms. Um, anyway, so calendula, I'm really excited to have rebudding in the bed. Yes. If you'll recall, the other day I did a short video on how I was covering my plants um, because the city was expected to spray for mosquitoes there was a, um, a few mosquitoes found with West Nile virus, so I totally understood why they were spraying, although of course um, 
you know, it's not the best for our pollinators, but I did cover up some of my plants. I didn't cover the entire garden, but I did cover up some of my plants that I really knew the bees love and I don't want to risk them being poisoned if the spray ended up on the flowers that they love to drink from. It has been a couple days since they sprayed and I'm very happy to say that this, I'll get a closer look now, but my flowers are as busy as they were before the spray. So this container here was where I originally had those large marigolds, the ones that were those big heads that kind of, they did okay in the flower bed. But it also included this plant I'd grown, the dwarf curry. And I had just tucked an extra yarrow in here. You can see how much it loves being in the sun now. So I pulled out the marigolds, I added some new potting mix, and I just planted a whole bunch of different lettuce seeds. I think I have a mescaline mix, um, a romaine lettuce mix, and then I think also just like a mixed lettuce, general mixed lettuce mix. So we'll see. I'm not expecting to get like full heads of romaine lettuce from this. I'm, I'm looking for like baby lettuce but lettuce typically is relatively frost hardy not heavy frost but it can handle a little bit of a frost so um you know i'm looking forward to having that this month hopefully in the next couple weeks i'll be able to harvest some this is kale that i planted kale seeds that i planted oh about a week ago maybe a week and a half ago oh this was the catnip pot that I pulled the catnip out, broke up the soil, and added a top layer about that, about two inches deep of, um, of new potting mix. I mixed in some, some um, perlite to make it a little fluffier because I used kind of a cheap potting mix. And uh, I planted this kale seeds. So hopefully we will have some kale this fall, which I would be very happy to have. One of the things I'm deciding right now at the end of the season is what pepper plants and eggplants I want to save. They're both perennial and I hope to do a video on my attempt to bring them inside. I brought uh, several pepper plants inside last year and one of them survived. Um, but I have this one eggplant, this is my single seed challenge eggplant plant, um, and it has done pretty well. It's already in a pot and so I'm going to try to overwinter it <laughs> indoors. We will see. And speaking of a pop of color, look at this beautiful, beautiful, deep purple pepper. This is definitely one plant I'm going to bring inside and try to, I'll probably harvest this tomorrow when we do our saute. Um, it's one plant I'm definitely going to bring inside and try to overwinter. And then this is the first bell pepper attempt for this plant that I got as a seedling from a big box store. So um, it was pretty late going, but I think it struggled because this, this bush of Christmas lima beans has really kind of blocked out the sun for a lot of these. In fact, like my other eggplant plants are not producing any more fruit because they're just not getting the sun they need to be able to do that. And lastly, the, the broccoli plants I planted oh, about a month ago are still alive. I will probably be clearing out this eggplant plant um, around October, and I hope to see these guys doing better. I'm gonna give them more fertilizer, uh, more nutrients to grow, and hopefully once they start getting a lot more sun, they'll take off. But I'm glad to see that they're still alive and kind of sticking around for when they're really needed to grow. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button. If you aren't already a subscriber, please consider doing so, and uh, otherwise, I'll see you next time.